Welcome back to another episode of Archie Sonic Character Files as we explore the histories of the inhabitants on planet Mobius. In this episode, we take a look at the history of Dr. Robotnik's silent but deadly creation known as the Tails Doll. Well, it be the spooky month again, and since I've mostly been frantically trying to finish the 100th episode special from my Forgotten Media series, I figured I'd put out a new episode from this series to keep you occupied for a while. The Tails doll made its first appearance in Archie Sonic issue 231. Robotic enjoys himself from seeing the roboticized Mecha Sally throw Sonic off of the Death Egg Mark II, only to be frustrated when he finds out that the Chaos Emerald powering the Death Egg has gone missing. So he makes a retreat, but not before leaving behind Projects, Titan, and Deadly Cuddles to try and do some damage on new mobile Tropolis. After the defeat of Titan Metal Sonic, Cream the Rabbit finds the Tails doll lying around in some rubble and takes it with her to take care of, until she finds its owner. After being taken into the city, the Tails doll began a series of sabotage missions with its Nanite Disruptor ability, such as trying to destroy the Civic Center, destroy a power generator in an attempt to disable the city's shield, cause some havoc to Mina Mongoose's concert, and tries to destroy Castle Acorn. Eventually, Cream begins to realize that with the doll's constant disappearances, and these attempts to destroy Nicole's nanite technology, this thing is more than just padding and stitches. She tells her mom that she's heading out to do some training with Team Freedom, and the Tails doll slinks away to try and cause more trouble, only to be spotted by Team Freedom. As the doll uses the nanites to upgrade itself into a monster, the creature announces its plans to not only destroy the power plant, but to also destroy the power scrubbers from the old Robotropolis and unleash its radiation onto the city. But thanks to the Super Genesis Wave, its master plan never became a reality. Which leads us into the new timeline, making its first appearance in issue 252. Now, this is where things get a little bit confusing, as it does pick up where we left off, but not quite. And I'm not gonna get into the whole deal about the gang getting their memories back because that's our rant for another time. So here's the gist. At one point, Robotnik created the Tails doll to cause havoc for Sonic and the Freedom Fighters, only to end up getting defeated. Later on, the Tails doll was rebuilt and sent to attack Mobile Tropolis while the team were off on their own solo missions. Nicole contacted Sonic and Tails for help, and as they were getting ready to stop the creature who was using its control gem to rebuild itself into a more stronger body, Robotnik launches the Genesis Wave, which leads into the whole Worlds Collide story. Later on, reality is restored, and we're back to where we left off. With the combined efforts of Tails and Nicole, they were able to stun the creature, while Sonic attacks its control gem, reverting the creature back to its doll form, and booted it out of the city. But it didn't take long for Robotnik to build a new one. This time, the Tails doll is sent on an undercover mission as it boards the Sky Patrol and hides inside the ventilation shafts. When it manages to create a video recording of the Freedom Fighters' plans to restore the Shattered Planet, it sends the message to Robotnik, who begins his own plans to thwart their efforts. For the Tails doll, the creature is instructed to give his coordinates to Phage, Robotnik's vicious virus program, to shut down the Sky Patrol's defenses and weapons. Tails quickly sends out a bunch of RC units to patrol the Flying Fortress, only for T-Pub to find the deadly doll and brings it to the group. The last we see of the Tails doll is its power gem destroyed once again, tied up, and Sally states that she plans to hack into its programming to see just what Robotnik is up to. And that concludes the history of the Tails doll, aka Deadly Cuddles, a plush looking robot that still acts as a dangerous threat. Now it's pretty obvious that this interpretation of the Tails doll is more or less inspired by the internet's take, being this creepy demonic creature out for blood. I remember watching those old videos about the Tails doll curse, where you'd lock yourself in a room around midnight, turn out the lights, and play living in the city backwards to try and summon the creature. Yeah, this was back in ye olden days of the internet, when the fanbase was more wild and creative in trying to carry on the legacy of certain Sonic characters. It's nothing like today where we're stuck with all this lame crap like Sanic and Uganda Knuckles and Big the Cat bullshit. Anyway, when it comes to the original source material, there's really not much to go off of for a character who only appeared in Sonic R. Just another one of Robotnik's creations, and that's it. The only time we would see it again are just brief cameos even in some non-Sonic related games like LEGO Dimensions and Minecraft. Funny enough, the Tails doll had a cameo way back in issue 134 of Archie Sonic, but of course this was before they decided to make it a more established character. It might have been easy to just write this thing off as a weak loser villain, but Archie Sonic's take fully embraces the internet's more darker take on the character, which I'm all for. 
then again, that's probably just more of my nostalgia talking. Even John Gray got to have some fun in designing the creepy Tails doll in some of those non-canon off-panel segments. I do like the idea of the Tails doll being this secret undercover agent for Robotnik, causing destruction while playing dead to hide itself. It's a real shame we never got to see its original monster form in action. That would have been an epic battle between that and Team Freedom. Although it does leave me wondering on why did Evan Stanley design this form to look more like Mara's girlfriend. At least we got to see its monster form in action in the new timeline. Even if its first appearance is not one of the best places to start reading the new timeline. I guess Sega has second thoughts on its monster form because now it's more toned down. But I think it's alright. Think of it as like a robot version of the Bio-Lizard. And it goes back to being a secret agent to Robotnik in the later stories. Huh, kind of odd that in the old timeline, it starts off with the Tails doll being an undercover agent, then becomes the monster, while the new timeline does this in reverse. And the idea of the Tails doll and Phage working together in a way, is something that I never thought I wanted to see. <laughs> even if it's short-lived. I guess I should briefly mention its IDW Sonic counterpart, since so far, it's only been seen in that Season of Chaos story. I was surprised to see them carry over the idea from Archie Sonic about the Tails doll being a spy, but obviously all the creepiness around the character has been greatly toned down. It kind of comes off as comic relief now that I think about it. Well, it was nice to see it in action again in IDW Sonic, but I still prefer Archie Sonic's take. If we ever see this doll show up in future content, then it won't be in any of the more recent modern Sonic stuff, seeing as how Sega's been establishing that whole mandate of only certain characters can only exist in the classic Sonic universe. Yeah, thanks Sonic Forces. Yuck. Well, that wraps up this character file, so until then, I got a juice! Yeah, <laughs>